Hello. Good morning. Hello. How are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm I'm feeling good. Um, how are you? Okay. I'm a we have confused. It looks like we're having some Facebook issues again. I think Facebook hates me. You know what it is? Hmm. I think Facebook knows that I am not a Facebook fan. Yeah, I think it's probably a personal vendetta um, yeah. between you and either Mark Zuckerberg or just some AI component of Facebook is probably. Um, Liz says happy birthday. Thank happy you. Happy birthday. It's Allison's birthday, everybody. Aw, thanks for remembering, Liz. Um, thank you. Everything to you, Allison. That is my birthday present to you. I'm I so grateful. I graciously accept that gift. I, accept, I will accept any and all gifts. Um, you can just send them to the Fairfield County District Library. You don't care of them, but to me, um, they'll find them. <laughs> I was actually thinking about that, not um, that someone should send me a gift. But I was thinking, <laughs> I mean, you know, any, any day, that's great. Anyway. But, um, I was thinking oh. about how I don't have any, um, I don't have any, I really don't have any library mugs. And I don't, I definitely don't have any Dewey Decimal mugs, which are like the, would be, a Dewey mug would be the most fun, but I don't, all the mugs I have, I don't have a library one. So I got to get on that. Right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe I need to get that for you for your, I'll get you the, 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 the mug with the Dewey number for coffee. The, see, that would be perfect. <laughs> I, don't need those. I don't know if they make those or not, but I mean, oh, I feel like. I have totally seen them. Okay, well, because yeah. they make a lot of library stuff, but they, make, they also make them with the number for tea. Yes, definitely coffee, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, most of my mugs are like souvenir mugs from places or coffee shops or you know whatever. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. No one needs to send me a present or buy me a gift. But um, but it is my birthday, and I'm happy to be here. I'm wearing my Kurt Vonnegut shirt. I you know like to wear something. Something fun that I like. Uh, I don't get, really have many book-related shirts. I've got a couple Harry Potter ones, but yeah. other than that, I do know. have a lot of those. I have a lot of book shirts. I um, I'm not like a t-shirt kind of person. Like I don't have a whole lot of t-shirts, so I think that's that's why. Yeah, and truthfully, I had a handful, mostly Harry Potter, um, until. And then I do have, that is one, I do have one that says, I will do we decimate you. And I do love that one, but it's a ton of meant for like working out. So I'm not, you know, um, but I was it like a year ago or a year and a half ago. Um, Becky, our director said that we could wear book related shirts on Fridays and Saturdays to work because before it was, you could wear sports stuff. Like most places you can wear your Ohio state things if you're working on a Friday or a Saturday or whatever. But there are a whole lot of people at the library who are not at all interested in sports. Just I don't want a sports shirt. So right. that didn't apply to me. But then Becky said we can have a book shirt as well on those days. And so then I went and uh, went hog wild and now have a, uh, I have a, I have a book <laughs> shirt every day, every Friday of the year. Uh, show those guns. Are you? Oh, uh, he wants me to wear my tank top to show off my guns. Which is not <laughs> going to happen. Thank you, though, Liz, for the suggestion. Do we decimate you? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I bring that up. Says that. What? I think I need a shirt that says that. Yeah, because it's a great shirt to have. And it, so you can wear it like to intimidate people. <laughs> right? I love intimidating people. <laughs> but um, speaking of. Dewey decimating people. Yes. We, we mentioned to you last week that we would talk about the Dewey decimal system. Allison is going to demystify that for us. Well, I'll try. I kind of got wrapped up in it yesterday. I got very excited to talk about it. And then as often happens with me, I probably should have started sooner because then I just get like all wrapped up in it and I need several days to clarify what I'm going to talk about. But this isn't a formal presentation. This is just us and you guys, which is great. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Hopefully you'll, I guess my point is hopefully you will leave demystified and not further mystified. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but I did want, I wanted to start by talking about Melville Dewey a little bit. Um, 
who is the creator, yeah, yeah, who's the creator of the Dewey Decimal System. And um, you know, kind of a sexist pig. That's, I'm getting to that. I have it okay. laid out. Um, I'm gonna, just going to put that out there. Right. Um, in 1876 was the first copyrighted version of the Dewey Decimal System. Um, and it was, that original copyrighted version was 44 pages long. The original pamphlet he made that kind of passed around to people and was like, you know, what do you guys think of this was only four pages long. Um, and now, now it's uh, four, volumes. four volumes. Now it actually, and now it's not, they're not even gonna print it anymore. It only exists online, so it can be constantly updated, which is kind of nice. Um, Liz says this is where a PowerPoint would be helpful. Well, you know what? <laughs> You're in luck. I have a slide. <laughs> um, that it turns out is very difficult to use with this recording platform that we're on. So we're just going to do the best that we can. Um, but before 1876, before Dewey promoted this system, books often in libraries, libraries often had closed stacks, closed stacks, which meant that the public wasn't browsing the books. Um, you just went to the library and said, hey, I need things on this in the library and went and got them for you. And therefore books weren't really arranged topically. They were tended to be arranged kind of just by how they, when they got them, when the book or when the library acquired them, because it didn't really matter to the staff. They had, they knew what, they had their own system for knowing where it was on the shelf, but they didn't need to aid browsing in any way. And so as libraries, I think it was kind of like, like two things that fed each other, but as libraries changed and as people thought more about how to organize information, they wanted to make a system that the public itself could use and that aided, uh, helped people find books about a similar subject together. Um, and they just didn't really have that before. And so Dewey's system fed into and was kind of copied by and modified by lots of systems across the world. The Library of Congress system is also based on Dewey's system and it's much different now, but um, just the idea of dividing all of human knowledge into <laughs> numbered sections was kind of revolutionary and also a pretty monumental task. Um, and the fact that he was able to do it in a way that is relative, so the book that's on the shelf has a relationship to the books that are around it, so that it's meaningful, um, it's hierarchical, so things fall, something that falls after another book is kind of incorporated in the subjects that come before it. All of that is pretty impressive. Um, it's also very biased. It's a very Anglo-American centric system. Um, yeah. And so the way that we, there's a lot of prejudice inherent in its structure. So thankfully the solution to that is constant revision, eliminating numbers, creating new numbers, um, expanding, uh, moving things around so that we can create it so that it better reflects the way the world actually is. Um, and then like Leah said, the other thing is that we also keep in mind that uh, Melville Dewey had a history of harassing women. Um, there were a lot of women who made very public complaints against him, which mm -hmm. given the time period, the fact that there were so many public complaints, he was, points um, to the fact he was pretty bad. <laughs> It, 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 it's it's really bad like yeah. putting his name down and it's just like he was so despicable that it's um yeah it's, it's kind of like you wish we didn't have the system that we're so dependent on the system that he created because <laughs> he was really not a great guy he was really kind of disgusting yeah so, so he um he did end up stepping down from the American Library Association, I believe, um, which he did co-found um, because he was just, he got in so much trouble. Um, Kicked him out. <laughs> yeah, I think he stepped down. I think he was. Well, I think rich. it was stepped, stepped down. down more. Yeah. So, um, but the record shows that he stepped down. Um, and so, but it was. People resign to spend time with their families. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, that is what he did. Um, but he was also just a very um, intellectual thinker in uh, being able to apply, trying to divide and apply the whole world of knowledge to this indexing system was a pretty impressive feat. And um, yeah, he did advocate for women and working in the libraries, and I think because they were easier to control and easier to harass. So um, 
that that kind of was a self-serving uh, that was self-serving for him to to kind of say that it, this was okay work for women. Yeah. 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 Um, so another thing that he did though, that, that, so the Dewey Decimal System really took off. It was certainly the, um, the first of its kind and the most effective of its kind. Other people tried things that just weren't, weren't as comprehensive and didn't allow for as much change within them and the building that goes on. Um, but another thing that Dewey was a proponent of that didn't take off was spelling reform. He wanted um, to simplify spelling and so that there weren't any extraneous letters. And he did this hardcore. His name, Melville, is spelled how you would think, you know, Herman Melville or whatever, M-E-L-V-I-L-L-E. -E. But he shortened it. It's M-E-L-V-I-L. -E That's how he is if you Google him or whatever, because those other letters were extraneous and he didn't see a need for them. So we're going to try this. I'm going to try to share. I'm going to step away from it. Yeah, I think, <laughs> well, I don't know if this will work. I don't know if I'll be able to do it or not, actually. Just, just try. Just try. No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I wanted to give you guys an example of this because he had he would have these um, events at his Lake Placid home, and he had a menu for it that they have still preserved. And um, it's, you know, really obnoxious to try to read it. Um, Sorry guys, it like now was telling me that it wasn't even available to share. So that's convenient. Oh, it works this morning. Okay, I think I've got it now. Leah may drop off, um, but she'll be back on. We're gonna try it. Okay, so hold on. This is all, <laughs> this is all new. I'm gonna hide Leah. We're gonna picture in picture the other way. Okay, I'm hoping you guys can see this and hear me. But this was his uh, menu at his Adirondack, Adirondack Lodge. The menu was haddock, potted beef with noodles, parsley, mashed potatoes, butter, steamed rice, lettuce, and ice cream. And you can see there his advice for guests, see the beautiful afterglow on the mountains, blah, 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 blah. Um, fine view from Golf House Porch. Just, it does seem a little outrageous and a little hard to read. And uh, believe it or not, that did not take off. So now bear with me while I move. I hide the slide. I bring Leah back. And I think I'm back. I think we're back now. <laughs> Hopefully that works for everybody. Mary says, I did it. OK, great. Um, so I think. I think it like timed out the slide. I had it up and then like it had been too long since I used it. I think is what happened. Okay. Um, that, um, that way of spelling is absolutely ridiculous, but it's really funny because like when little kids are learning how to write and like learning phonics, like they'll write notes like that. Like, yeah. and with, with letters that I'm like, that's not how you spell city, but okay, I, I can, I can, I can sound it out. Yeah. Sound it out. Yes. And that's kind of what he was doing. He was just sounding it out and he just felt like everybody that's how we should write is just sound it out and speak that way. And um, so that part that didn't, that didn't catch on. Um, we already knew the other way and it's kind of hard to just go back. I think I'm all for simplification, but I do think that that was probably a little much to ask of people. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, whew, okay. All right. So basically he divided all of human knowledge into 10 classes or disciplines. And then each of those 10 disciplines are further divided 10 more times and further divided 10 more times, basically, to create a three digit number. Not all numbers are used, but every book that is classified or item classified by the Dewey Decimal System definitely has three numbers assigned to it. And those, like I said, represent they actually represent a discipline. They don't really represent a subject. And so one thing that we were gonna talk about and mention is you may find things on a subject all over the range of the Dewey Decimal System because it's really about how the subject has been approached. So a good example is like bees. There's like beekeeping and that's under like an agriculture number and, you know, domestication and, and, and you, those types of numbers. And then there's just a book about bees as an insect. And that's going to be in the 590s 
the anatomy of a bee as an insect, which is different than keeping bees. So that's one example, but I think Leah, you had, you might have another one. Um, well, I made you complete. You made there Samantha. Are all these rules, I, I made Samantha, your predecessor. Mm -hmm. um, there are all these rules about like where books should be. And people kept coming in and like asking for where are your wedding books? I'm like, well, what kind of information are you looking for? You want like wedding cakes or wedding flowers or giving your speech, you know, the, the toast at the reception. Are you looking for honeymoon destination? Wins? Looking for wedding dresses? Because all of those books were spread out in different areas of the collection. And it got to the point where it was like, this is ridiculous. People want all of this information and they want it all in one spot. So um, we did some brainstorming and we came up with a way to get all of the wedding books in one location by adding an extra line to the spine label. Um, the, the general number for weddings is what? 395.22? Yeah, it's in the 395s because it's a custom. And so that's yeah. talking about customs and weddings are a custom, but especially not even, it wasn't even just Dewey in that time, people weren't planning weddings at the scale. We're planning weddings now. It was, you know, unless you were like, a royal, you were just right. kind of wanting to get married. So there was a, an accommodation there for all the wedding. So we, we brought all of those um, books about weddings, whether it was like putting together a bridal bouquet or, you know, dressmaking or cake decorating or toasts or, um, you know, planning a wedding on a budget. So budgeting books, we brought all of those books to that wedding area um, but we then divided them out further by adding an extra line to the spine label. So we'll have books that say, that have the Dewey number um, 395.22, and then a line that says cakes, and then the cutter, which is like the first three letters of the author's last name, um, which is like how you find the book by a certain author on the shelf. Um, so the, while we had all the wedding books together, they were then grouped according to their subject within the idea of planning a wedding, um, which totally breaks the rules, <laughs> um, but it, it makes the most sense. So we even had like, you know, the the, the wedding music, sheet, sheet music there instead of in the 780s where all the music stuff is. Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of those books, we did put stickers on the front that say, hey, if you're looking for more books on music go to the 780s um, so that people like if they weren't finding exactly what they needed in that book they, they knew where else in the library to go to find more information on that subject that wasn't wedding specific but could still be useful to them yeah they may have wanted just like maybe they just wanted some classical pieces and the wedding music book didn't cut it but then they knew where to go after that because otherwise that 395-22 number is probably just, you know, like wedding customs over time because the 390s is also where you find another example of that is um, costumes. And so that's like what people have worn throughout the ages, what's a traditional costume for a certain place um, or time period or people. But um, so you're not going to put like Tim Gunn's guide to fashion or whatever there because that goes in the 740s where fashion lives and or arts because the 300s are social sciences and the 700s are arts and recreation. And so I was actually, if you don't mind me, I was going to show another slide that showed those classes because I feel like that that is helpful. I don't think you'll be able to hear me. You'll just have to imagine my dulcet tones um, <laughs> sharing this slide. All right. So let's give us a second here. You guys, I'm going to walk. I'm going to say all the steps. Oh, no. Oh, my slide. It kicked me out of my slide again. So I know, I feel like Technology. I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, the seven, or I'm sorry, the 10 disciplines are things like, the first one is interesting because it was just what, supposed to be general knowledge. It wasn't really a discipline. That's where encyclopedias go, library science stuff goes. And then now journalism, it was supposed to be like that. But Dewey in his infinite wisdom didn't inc include a place for computers. So we needed to create a whole new range of numbers were computers and so they went in the zero zero zeros because that's there was space there for them yeah. um but 
100s are philosophy and psychology, 200s are religion, and that's another place where the 220s through the 280s are all Christianity, and every other religion is in 290s. And so that's absurd. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it does it not Anglo-centric thinking. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it certainly does not reflect the world as it is doesn't reflect the world as it was when Dewey made it either. You know, some things, computers that did reflect the world, there weren't computers. He couldn't have accounted for that. But, you know, the religion, certainly it was not like that when Dewey lived either. He did not account for those. He just dumped them all. And so, for example, a religion like Islam, which I believe population-wise throughout the world is relatively close to Christianity, it has one number that it shares with two other religions. Um, and so things like that can cause difficulty in a collection, especially a very large collection um, because your numbers begin to get very, very long because your three digits are assigned by the Dewey decimal system. And there is always a, usually there is a decimal point and then further numbers after. And a lot of those numbers are also assigned by Dewey um, because it's, I mean, it's a four volume set. There's a lot of set numbers, but then there's a lot of, also a lot of numbers that you build using nine different tables um, to further basically show all the different facets. You kind of facet the number to show what more of what it's about. And so you can do that, but your number starts to get really, really long. And um, so it's an unfortunate, the religion section is an unfortunate part of Dewey, in my opinion. Um, we at the library to keep the, the Dewey number shorter. Um, you can have numbers that like you've got your three, your decimal point, it can go on like 12 digits and get very, very specific after, um, after the decimal point. We try to keep it to three or four in most cases. Yeah. Um, but there are all kinds of places where we break that our own little rule um, just because we want more specificity. Um, I know like in the, um, like the baby area, um, we have, you know, like books on newborns. Um, we've carried that decimal place out a little bit further for some books so that we get all of those books about taking care of preemies together. Because if you have a preemie and, you know, you need specialized information for that, you don't want to root through the three shelves on newborns to find the information about preemies. So we put all of that together. So there are yeah. times when we break our rule of keeping the Dewey number short just for ease of use for our customers. Yes, a lot of libraries have found four after the decimal point to be the magic number, um, both in just like, because the longer they get, the more likely they are to be misshelved because it's too many. It's just, it's a lot of numbers to keep track of. Um, yeah. uh, to fit on the size the side of a book already, four numbers a lot of times aren't going to fit, you know, straight across. Um, sometimes they do, but four seems to be the magic number that people try to cut it off at. And so another example of that is in um, our law section in the 340s. Um, we have a lot of kind of like do-it-yourself law guides or just things and law covers, you know, um, <laughs> just, just a, a lot of stuff. And so the way that Dewey is structured, for example, I have an example here, um, 346, let's say. 346 um, is, well, the area I'm thinking of is things like real estate licenses, foreclosure, um, property law. That's the, that's the phrase. Property law is there in the 346. And so um, the way Dewey works is that it should be 346.73. 7.3 represents the United States. It's one of those numbers that can be added on to different places to say this is about the United States, 073. Um, so 346.73, and then I would say, so that's like property law in the United States, and then I would add more stuff on to say more specific types of property law. However, in my mind, as a public library in Lancaster, Ohio, we're probably not gonna have books about property law for other countries. <laughs> that doesn't seem like a good use of our shelf space, honestly. Um, and so I said, and Dewey said, you can't do this, this is in the rules, but I said, let's strike out that 73 and then I can have four numbers after that decimal point to get much more specific so that books about eviction, books for rental property owners, books for, that those are all together and they're not with books about patents because patents are also property law. And so our real estate law books, we're gonna be mixed in with our patent books if I didn't get more specific with the number. So that's why you can also kind of, like we were saying, modify it to suit your 
community's needs because if you're trying so hard to find a book and everything's mixed up together, it almost feels like, well, why do you even have these numbers on this mind to begin with? Yeah, and Audrey brought up how we um, have modified the fairy tale books upstairs because fairy tales end up at 398. Uh, point two? Is that is that right? Point two? Um, there's 398 and there's 398.2, and it's different at Maine than it is other places, but yeah. Um, and, um, but for a lot of like uh, fairy tales, you want to know like their country of origin um, because it's it's really interesting. Um, and we also like for like teachers, like there will be assignments to get stories from different countries. Um, I know that in library school, that was one of the things we had to do was get fairy tale books. Um, so we have sorted those out so that um, they they reflect the, the country of origin for that fairy tale. And you do do that with Dewey, but it's a number that's absurdly long and right. on the spine of a children's fairy tale book, which is likely going to be thin, going out, you know, seven, eight, nine decimal places to specify the country of origin. It, yeah, not just put a country code and be done with it. And so, and yeah, like Audrey said, we also grouped stories together in the children's department that are about one, all the Cinderella books are together. Yeah. Um, you know, all the Beauty and the Beast, just fairy tales, Red Riding Hood that kids or for school projects or parents are looking for um, to make that easier. So we definitely don't adhere 100% to the rules. No library does. Um, but you I'm can, forever you, calling Allison and saying, can we break the rules on this book? I know um, I break the rules. I feel an immense sense of guilt, but uh, I do it because it just, it does. It, we have to make it make sense for the people yeah. who are using. She you sent an email just last week confessing that you broke the rules with a Yates book it, because you wanted to put all of his books together. And while you know, he's mostly known for his poetry. He did have some prose and some other stuff. And there was the books of his um, other, it was poetry and other writings. So it should have gone in the miscellaneous number, but we put it in the poetry number. So it was with his other stuff. Um, yes. And that's the collected works. And there's, there's a bunch of rules, surprise. There's a bunch of like rules, even outside of all of this. Um, there's the rule of three and, um, there's, so there was more than three things in that book, and um, I just, it, I, anyway, so it should have been, but the thing is that by not putting it in 818, or 828, rather, um, putting it in 821 with the poetry, with his, the rest of his poetry, it just, it, it, it didn't change it didn't change the discipline. It was just kind of like the format of those collected works. If I were totally changing the discipline, then that's something we kind of struggle with more. But as it was, I was just gonna make it easier for people. To yeah, so. yeah. And that's a lot of what we do. We break the rules in order to make things easy. Um, I know when I first got to the library, all of the memoirs were put in the biography section. It's, you know, it's the story of someone's life. And that's great, except if they're not a famous person, um, they're, you, it's hard to find them. So like if, you know, a person writes a book about her um, struggle with breast cancer and, you know, what she endured and what she overcame and what she learned about herself. And, you know, that inspirational story, yes, it's great, but it's written by just some random person. Um, it, it, finding that book in the um, biography section, which is huge, it gets lost. Where if you put that book in the breast cancer number, um, it might be meaningful for someone who is struggling with breast cancer and looking for that inspirational story to help, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, pull them up and um, yes, give them hope. Yes. You know, so it's more meaningful mm -hmm. there. So um, that's one of the things that I've been making Allison change. Mm -hmm. like, do that anymore if it's not a famous person don't put them in the biography section <laughs> yeah and, yeah and it's it's tough but a lot of times we we make a lot of exceptions but i do think the exceptions generally prove the rule to be mostly effective mm -hmm. to know where things yeah you can generally expect to find things um and there are so, all those books that you that we will sit and debate about um <laughs> like um one of those here's here's an example um, sorry, I totally interrupted you. Oh, no, go ahead. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> Carrie Fisher wrote a book. 
she's famous. Um, so she could go in the biography section. She's also an actress. So she could go um, in the 790s in the Hollywood section. Um, but she also, when she wrote this particular book, it was about her struggles with um, her mental health issues. So it can go in the mental health number. And in the mental health number has like the social number and the medical number. And well, it's not really medical in nature. It's more like how it affected her life. And you know, so it would, so it could go in the 300s, the 600s, the 700s, or the biographies. And mm -hmm. where do you put a book like that? Um, we will oftentimes sit and debate about those types of books and like, where is it most helpful? Where would people expect to find it? Um, <clears throat> Yeah, and like I said, there are a lot of rules that they lay out for you to follow. There's a rule of two, there's a rule of three, there's a rule of application, and then there is, I am not making this up, there is something that is officially called the table of last resort, and you go to that table, if you're building a number, it's like eight different things, and it's a prioritization of them um, for how to arrange the stuff when you're building when you're building a number, and it's called the table of last resort. But my table of last resort is usually just calling Leah or <laughs> or Melanie and being like, tell me what to do because I've thought about this too much. I'm in a, I'm in a spiral and I need help. Um, I know we're getting close to time on this. Um, I was just going to real quickly say 300s are social science, 400s are language, 500s are science, and then the 600s are called technology. Before, when Dewey made the system, it was um, useful, the useful arts, and then 700 was the fine arts. And so that's why the 600s, technology wasn't really a a concept the way that it is now and so well, I learned it, 600s i learned it as because 500s were science and i learned um okay, as applied science like yeah. how you take that information and make it useful yes so. and now it's called technology and so it started out as useful arts because it was sewing chemical processes manufacturing you know and then the fine arts were in the 700s, but now 600s are technology, 700s are arts and recreation. So that's also where sports, things like that are. And then um, literature is in the 800s and history geography is in the 900s. And I may in the comments post um, a, this slide. One Dewey I made the slide and we have a Dewey number. I could try it now. I know we're a little past time. Do you want me to try it now? Try it, try it. Okay, and Leah, I don't know if you'll be able to hear me. Not. I'll just see if I can share it. Um, no, it's just, it's so, it's like it times me out. This You've is, got to share it in the comments. Yeah. Okay. I'll share it in the comments then. This is far from perfect, this, uh, this software that we're using. Um, I'll share it in the comments, but basically there's a number that is, it's a legitimate number. It's very long. It's the types that you would need to use your table of last resort probably for. Um, and it, it is not a number that is on the spine of our book. We cut it off at two decimal places because that's all we really need. Um, but each section of the number has a meaning. And so I'm going to post that slide because it shows the meaning of each section and then post what the book was that it was about. Um, Cause I just think it's really interesting and a good description of how you have to think about where something goes. So I know that was a very rushed introduction, but hopefully, hopefully it was interesting for someone. Yeah. And, and you know me, I break all the rules. So anytime something, yeah. not it should have been, it was probably because I said, Allison, can we move this? <laughs> you know me, I sit in sweat and strife about the idea of having to break the rules. So between the two of us, yeah, I break all the rules. we have a balance of the rules. It's it's great fun. <laughs> we have a balanced collection. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for sticking around a little bit longer with us today, and we will see you next week. Happy have a happy birthday, Allison.